Hi guys, Spectre here. Welcome back to my Total Warhammer 3. Continuing my Kugaf campaign. Um, something I did figure out as well. I mean, I kind of had the income when it's only tier 3 there anyway. And these ones have all got the crosses on them because you can't unlock them. So, the this building, this in, even though it's expensive at 5,000, you're probably better off building this in almost every town that you can. Then you're going to get more Chaos Warriors and more Chaos Warriors with great weapons, which are what you're going to be wanting. So then you can at least fund them into your armies, because you're not going to get loads of Chosen, and you're not going to afford them to begin with anyway. And you can only get them from a city. So at least the other one you can build in both the city and the towns. And Chaos Warriors are good all the way into the late game. They'll still hold their own. They're very good front line infantry. You just need something fast to complement them so they don't get completely destroyed by artillery for the most part anyway. Now I've I've looked something up, I've got to look at the victory conditions on this. So he's got really weird victory conditions. See thirty five settlements, occupy loot raised or sacked. So I've got two so far. So I need thirty three more. Clan Helhine who are destroyed, probably by him. You've got to destroy Helman Ghost anyway, and he's nearby as a threat, so you would do. For some reason, Karakazul. So actually, I need to send at least one army that way. Maybe more. And then I've got to maintain control of the Dragon Isles. So this first starting province, when I actually claim this, I probably need to like recruit an army and leave it here to guard this. Because I need to keep it for the rich conditions. And then I can send other armies off, sacking and whatever. Once we've got rolling. And it's okay as well because we've um, pretty much destroyed this guy. He's kind of done for. Because he's now got a red crested skink chief and they're useless. They're like the worst lord you can recruit. And then you've got basically loads more skinks. He can't recruit Saurus because he hasn't got the building for it. And it just depends on what he builds there, basically. Because he's only got the port, he's got his growth building. I don't know if the AI destroys buildings. Honestly, don't. I don't know if they destroy and build it in something else, because they might do. Um, and then it depends on what he builds there. But he can't really build any good troops. And nothing above tier 3. Sauruses are not bad in the earlier mid game, and they'll definitely outfight Plague Bearers, because Plague Bearers being demons, demons are just shit. The problem with demons is the demonic instability. Pretty much once, once that kicks in, the unit's pretty much dead. You can sometimes stave it off with your healing magic from Nurgle, which I've done once or twice, but it's not the easiest thing to do. But other thing is, they've got low leadership. I don't know why the demon's got a leadership of a goblin. It, they should have like 80, 90, or 100 leadership. What would they be scared of or have bad morale for? They're an otherworldly entity. And this makes them too weak alongside that. And they're already weak enough to begin with because their physical resistance basically counts for fuck all because they've got no armor. So they need a more physical resistance by a lot. But they still need some more anyway, but they need then more leadership to counteract it. They're just, they're not good. They don't work well. And because they can like have the leadership bottomed out so easily It's not worth um, recruiting them, it's really not. Yeah. 
that one's going round. That's going to go up to tier three, so we'll be able to get them really quickly. And then I want to look at getting this to tier three. And then I'll upgrade this one as well. Because then what I can do in Dragon Fang Mount, I can build this. Uh, not this, sorry, this. Build another one of these. And then it just means I'll get more of these things. Because that one is... That one's the city, isn't it? Only. It's only local region as well. I mean, technically you could build it up to that. Oh, in fact, Dragon Fan Monk, the one we've got the other thing we've got to build. Shit. Got to build that. Hmm. Right, that hasn't got one. So if I... Get this built in here. Also alongside that. Then when it comes to it, I can destroy this. And build this again. And I'll have that in all three buildings. Because I do need that. You have to build um, luxury resources for Nurgle. Because it's the only way you get extra hero capacity. It's a really shit way to get hero capacity. But at least it gives plus one to every hero. Just obviously, if there's some, like, a, if there's a region or province with, like, no luxury resources at all, then there's no point in occupying it really as much. Because you don't, you, like this one here, this one, for example, has got spices. So spices will give you a plus one for your hero capacity. But, like, this one here, I don't think this one has luxury resource, as far as I'm aware. And there are quite a few that won't. If it hasn't got a luxury resource, you're not going to get any hero capacity. Hmm. Although, strangely enough... Oh. Oh. So he can only be recruited from towns. Ah. And then your tier 2 settlements recruit your um, exalted heroes. And your tier 3 allows you to recruit your plague ridden. Right. You can bypass one of those with Kulgaf. I know you can. Because Kulgaf has... That one? That one. So you get more capacity, more recruit bank, and you can recruit your plague ridden in all provinces. So that one's also worth taking, because you do still want a plague ridden in there, because they're generally going to be your spellcaster with the lore of Nurgle. You'll stick them on a rock fly to keep them out of harm's way for the most part. They can also drop down and take out artillery crews and range units. Comes down to it. But they can fly around using Blight Boil and Fleshy Abundance. And then you can also maybe on odd occasions like go and drop like a, a hex on someone or something. That can be used to snipe characters. That can be used to debuff enemy units. You haven't got two good options up here because you've got the heal but you've only got three uses of it. It's a big heal. Or you can go with this one which is basically like um, smash them faster for the green skins. So you can use that. Obviously you fly him over them then pop it. And then they've got that buff for 21 seconds. Hmm. Right, we can already recruit our exalted hero. And that makes him tougher and have some more mass. That one's kind of useless, it's just bonus verse infantry. That one means he'll level up faster. Hmm. 
my research was done. What I'll do is, because that one's at least a general use one, I'll recruit him, he'll level up 15% faster. So at least when he levels up, I can get him up, level up faster to get Mentor. Then the next Exalted Nurgle Champion will level up quicker still, so he can help out. I'm not sure what else this guy has. Weapon Strength, some Resistance, he don't want him on a Chariot, Chariot butchers his stats. Maybe you could put him on a steed, because he could ride with the Chaos Knights later. You don't get negatives from the steed either. He gets a right killing blow right in the middle, that's pretty good. Along with Deadly Onslaught. That's nice. That just bumps up his stats. That one gives him leadership or a size. Allows him to pop, stand or die from mobility defense and leadership. That one, you get 50, 50 more experience from training. And then casual punishment rate 5% for the hero's army. Also both very good. And I think he already gives like a 50 or something, doesn't he? That gives him locus of fecundity and 5% physical resistance. Affects melee damage dealt back dealt to unit back at attacker. And minus 10 enemy armor enemy armies in local province. Fucking hell. Alright. And that gives him 5 melee defense and no glove priority plus one for hero's army. That won't benefit us in the Mono God at all because you don't have authority. That's a Warriors of Chaos mechanic. So what I potentially could do then is I could take Stint Ridden. So he's got 5% physical as well as the heal he can use on people. And that is the same as the one that you normally have on this. Just he doesn't get 5% physical. So then with him, I could take the Locus of Virulence. So then he's got a buffing spell I can use throughout the battle. And the other guy's got a heal as well. But it's not going to cost any wins of magic. And then I can take Chaos Strategist. I mean, that one's, I suppose, not bad, necessarily. That's probably the least of them, because it just buffs the guy. But that one actually helps your army more. Because it's going to train your troops up faster and you've got their casual to punishment. Which is always nice for a melee army because you're always going to take damage. Yeah, I like that. It's got to be tier 3 to recruit the cultists. Right, okay, fair enough. It's just that I do need a cultist, but the cultists are my scouts in this particular case. It's always good as well, money-wise, even though even if your money's 
going to be a bit on the low side. It's always good to get the first three of your heroes out. So even if you're going to keep them, well, three for Nurgle, obviously. Other factions might have more or less. Um, but it's always good to get your first heroes out as quickly as you can. Because once you've recruited them, they can start levelling up. And they can head towards getting Mentor at level 30. The longer you take to recruit them, obviously the longer that's going to take as well. Because then once they've got Mentor, the next one's going to level up even faster still. Yeah, so he gives them 50 experience off the bat. So then he's going to get another 50 by maxing that out. And then you're going to get another 50 there from that. So you're going to get 150 experience a turn. Which is not bad. And considering you can't recruit your units generally high rank. You can get 75 there as well from Kugaf. But I'm not taking that yet. As I need to push for his Mortis Engine effect. I need to get this. That is really really important once i've got that i can put a point in each of these and then i need to probably get rotting ways because the chance of a plague spreading plus 50 percent all armies faction wide is also incredibly useful I noticed it with Festus a lot as well. Even though you can have ones that like drastically reduce people's ability to fight back in some cases. But um I don't know if it's one of these ones. That one is the Yegu. Because that reduced their uh, castral punishment and attrition when under siege. That one, cycle time, mass of infrastructure buildings and extra growth. Summon Nurglings, Nurgle corruption, and minus form the attack on non Nurgle armies. But this one reduces the campaign movement range, so they're going to be moving slower, and they're also taking attrition. It's good to get Agues out there. Because unless they're immune to plagues like i think i think hellman ghost is immune to plagues as far as i'm aware i think i know he's immune to poison i'm not sure if he's immune to plague he might be but getting these out there where they spread to other armies and other settlements is good because that means if they get injured in like an auto resolve battle they're not going to be recovering and it's going to be there for as long as they've got the plague and because the plagues can bounce back and forth and increase the duration ridiculously it's like an offensive weapon for you to use without you actually having to fight. If you then meet an enemy army later on and their other units are at half health, you've got a really easy fight on your hands. Even if, say, it's two armies, if they bring two armies against yours but all their units are half dead, it might not be something you can auto resolve, but you might not need to. Just fight it. But it, it could potentially could be a really easy win if they're at half strength. And if that's what they go into the battle with, that health as well. No healing from like Lord of Vampires is going to help them or anything like that. They're basically going to have to um only thing they can heal is their single entities. Apart from that, they won't be able to heal their units. They'll remain at what they're at. that to get to tier 2 then I can upgrade this because I do need that to get up there a moment although this is one this is one of the ways to play Nurgle and he's in this location 
this is almost feeling in its own way like a hundred turn head start. Because I'm not really moving beyond my province. I mean, you can technically claim one additional one if you want to, but you don't have to. You can just stay in your starting province. And obviously, you don't, you don't have to completely claim your first starting province if you don't want to. You know, it's just the options there. Generally, people will do it for the commandment. But at the moment, I am using this lizard man to my benefit. Because if he keeps attacking me down here, he's free experience and free money for my army or for my lords. Most of the units in the army I won't be keeping. Pretty much none of them, apart from these. Um, but if he keeps attacking and his army is now even inferior, he's got no sources. They've just got skinks, which are terrible units. I mean, they've got leadership less than a goblin. Um, he's basically free money, free experience. But while he's there, Helm and Ghost hasn't attacked him yet. He hasn't got the anti-player bias. So while he's there, he's a buffer between me and Helm and Ghost. Right, we've got that one, but it costs 10,000. But potentially I can't really afford these units yet anyway, they're so expensive. And I haven't got enough money in the treasury to like justify it. Plus, to get chosen I need tier 4 at least, and then tier 5 to get chosen great weapons. So with that, you might as well wait and just use normal chaos warriors for the time being. What we do still need, because I have to get rid of a growth building, is some more growth. Did he, did he get Ambuscada? No, he ain't got anything yet. Okay, that's fine. That's scary to think that Kulgath was once a Nurgling. It's really scary to think. Because you've got to think Nurglings are like... <laughs> They're weaker than a plague bearer. So if, if you went up on their basic infantry, you'd have Nurglings, plague bearers, exalted plague bearers. Where for every other chaos god, they've only got two types. They've got like your basic demonettes, exalted demonettes, basic bloodletters, exalted bloodletters. You've got your blue horrors, your pink horrors, and then your exalted pink horrors. I mean, technically, because they've got the blue horrors, they kind of got like a mimic thing, but blue horrors don't become lords of change. Like, not in the law. In the game you can evolve one, but they don't become Lords of Change. So... Obviously, the gods themselves can create more of their greater demons. They're the only ones that can. But in Nurgle's case, he's quite unique, because he can make more um, great and clean ones. But Nurglings, if they live long enough, as they keep growing, can turn into a great unclean one. Which is rather terrifying. And considering how many billions of bleeding Nurglings he's got, obviously the vast majority die before they get chance. But it doesn't mean that some aren't going to get bloody lucky. He's got punishment here. Well, there's a nice big casualty pile there. At least it's on this island and not on the mainland. 
because he's got to be in the region to use it. So what I don't want is Helmand Gorsh getting here. I don't want to upgrade that one yet because that's the one that's most likely to be attacked and while it's just got these two basic buildings it's cost me nothing. So it's four turns until we get population surplus three. So what I'm going to do is, turn before it, I'll destroy this building. And then when it goes to tier 3, I can build the resource building. And I can build another one of these. Because I've got the growth building now there. So that's going to compensate for its loss. We can hopefully start churning out Chaos Warriors. Because at the moment we're not in a bad place around here because you've got... Vampire Counts have got no ranged. And Ogres haven't really got any range that's worth taking. Maybe they're Scrap Launchers, that's it. They've not really got much. They're far more dangerous in melee. So once I've got my decent front line, my Nurgle Chaos Warriors, I'm going to be okay. I ain't got to worry about the um, Ogs and Vampire Counts. All I need to try and make sure that I can do is I need to try and make sure I get an alliance with the Chaos Dwarves. Because the Chaos Dwarves on the other hand have got very, very dangerous range units. And until I can afford to get my Chaos Knights in my army, if they do declare war on me, I've got nothing to really deal with their ranged. My infantry will just get pounded to dust on the way in. I mean, I'm not sure about these ones, maybe. Cause they, aren't they on the same tree as the, um, the knights? Yeah. What have we got here? He's basically got a special range weapon is the only thing, which I don't give a shit about. I don't care about range weapons. So I could just get these guys as well, some of these in there maybe. So I was thinking of taking some Beta Nurgle, which I could. But they've only got 40 speed. You know, my Chaos Warriors have got 28, as have my Chosen. But my Knights have got 70 speed. But these guys have got 90 speed. The same as what my hero's going to have. So if I'm going to take some demons of some kind, these could also be good for flying over and helping pre-engage some of those um, artillery and I can use these more as like throwaway units because I'd still have like six knights and eight chaos warrior infantry and these could be used to help 
deal with any pesky range units and further run things down. Plus they've also got armor piercing, which is not bad because Chaos Knights don't have that. They're not armor piercing. Obviously Chaos Warriors are if they've got great weapons. Other than that, they're not. So I could just take some regular Plague Drones. They're 300 a piece, but they're cheaper than the Knights and they're cheaper than this one, the Death Head one. They're the only demon that I might take, but again, I'm going to take them as a throwaway. I don't want to really buff them, because that's their buff there. And they've, even then, they've got to get to rank 7 to actually make use of that. Demons die that bloody fast. I don't see most of them making it that far. But at the moment, my evil plan's working. But you've got to bear in mind with Nurgle. Nurgle's not so much like Scarbrand. They're both sacking factions, that's correct, but obviously Scarbrand's got his bloodletting. That's the only way he can gain growth. Now, while you're not going to be occupying too much, Scarbrand does need to have key cities here and there as recruiting stations to recruit his armies from. If he doesn't have them where he can get his best troops, he's kind of buggered. So he does need to have that availability. So keeping the bloodletting high is very good for Scarbrand and his other armies. Because it also reduces the upkeep of the units by keeping it high. So then you can afford even more armies. Although you'd be in the red anyway. But it means you're not going to be as big in the red. Uh, I don't really want another hero. At the moment. I mean technically I suppose we could use one as a scout temporarily. What's the first guy got? Mobile defense, okay. And that'll cost a hundred. Mm.
Mm -hmm. Looks like the Demon Prince is getting his ass kicked by Malice. One turn. So we can destroy that. There we go. It spread. It's got 11 turns on it. Oh my god. My bloody allergies. Tell you something, I, I, I love trees and, you know, plants and stuff like that. I find them incredibly beautiful, as it is like natural beauty of the, you know, natural world. Um, it's, um, What's happened to him? His power bar's gone to shit. What oh, it was almost zero on the thingy, but then again, strength ranking's 135. He's only got those three settlements then. That's all he's got. See if we can pass it by being in here. Okay. That. Is that cheaper? Oh, because of him. Well, I don't need more heroes yet, where I do need Chaos Warriors. So, yeah, build that. Once that's built, we can build the other building because that's, I think that's a lot cheaper. Yeah, massively cheaper. So cheap. Don't get me wrong, I, I know the building only gives you plus one capacity, like most of the other big buildings do. 
Some might give you plus two on like a tier four or tier five one, but this is on tier three, so I understand. It just gives you plus one of each, which is pretty cool, I suppose, in its own way. That you get all the heroes from like one type, one building thing. Um, obviously, the income for buildings in local province got by 15%. Even though you're a second faction, you're not really going to care about that. But the infections, they could have done it, but they give you more infections. They, they could have made it increase at least. So, like, if they were going to stick with, like, you know, let's say three, but three should be down here. So they could have gone three, six, nine. Something like that. Or, what they could even do is go with Nurgle's God number. So Nurgle's God number is seven. So what they could have done is Say start it with two, and they could have gone two, four, and then seven. So then you're getting seven infections per turn. They could have, you know, made it a bit more on the Nurgle side. We're going one, two, and then three. Well, that's crap. It's not a lot of infections at all. He cost 250. To be fair, they cost the same as well. I mean, I suppose I could stave off on the cultist and actually level this guy up. He's not going to need a stride. A stride will be completely pointless. So he's just, he's got a shit trade. The speed will still be good, because when he's on his rock fly, he'll have 108 speed. Rather than 90. But he's not going to need Strider, he's going to be flying above the battlefield. Strider's going to be useless. So I suppose you've got half half of the traits useless and half of the traits not bad. So yeah, rather than recruiting a cultist, I could just stick with this guy. And then at least I've got a... Oh, in fact, no, he's got death. No, in fact, I need to get rid of him. I will. I just realised his law. He's got law of death. You don't want law of death. Law of death is fucking terrible. The only thing good about law of death is life leeching and spirit leech. Because it's really good for sniping characters. Even characters that have magic resistance will hurt by that spell. That spell is nasty. It actually makes me wonder something. Was it say the damages on that? 33 to 67. Alright. What is the... I'm going to go down here and infect this as well. And so then we've got more growth throughout the territory, that's all. Helps us grow faster. So that's what you can always do is put it on Kugaf and then just send him to all the towns you want to grow. <laughs> it's just a really free way for doing it. And because he gets a much cheaper pot on him, I think it's like, what is it? 50% cheaper or something? Yeah, 50% less infections. It's really good. Whoa. That's because it's Nurgle Ascendant as well. Growth 350, fucking hell. Uh, 
and I'm gonna modify it moving. We can level this one up now. Or do we save for tier four? Yeah, we can get it to help with the growth, can't we? Fuck it. We'll do it. As long as that lizard man army doesn't move, I can infect that other thing. They've got no power bar. So he must have built an army and then lost his army again. I'm guessing he's getting his ass kicked by the ogres. Sometimes he gets really strong and I'm not sure how. Because he does spam an awful lot of zombies, which don't get me wrong, are strong with Helm and Ghost. But they're strong in the battle. They're not strong in auto resolve. He's where? Oh, is he still in their territory? No, moving back. I don't want him sitting there. don't need any of these. Actually, I'll just take that one. Because if I do happen to fight Zinch at all, I've got an advantage. Because I'm not taking these units. See, if I do take some Plague Drones in, that could be okay to take. Because I have more, more recovery and then recruited at a higher rank. That one I'll be doing anyway because it affects my Knights. They get a 7% Ward Save. So there are two there I could take on the other ones. Just so I've got a bit of something else. Plus also if I've got some plague drones in the air, they can act like a bodyguard with him. Because like if there's any flying units in the enemy armies, they're not in the air by himself alone. Although you can just take him over like your own units and just land him. And then if they're going to come down and try and attack him, they're right in the middle of all your army. And then you can always fly him out and they'll just stay down there fighting amongst your troops. And they'll get stuck. Oh, it's Greasers. Now see, weirdly as it is, I don't need to defeat Greasers. But Greasers is actually way more dangerous than Helm and Ghost. Because I can chop up Helm and Ghost in auto resolve with Chaos Warriors quite handily. I can't chop up Greasers in auto resolve. He'll have to be fought and be beaten. It 
didn't spread. Interesting. I'm going to worry about him right now. I mean, he's not got a full army. He's not at war with me. He's at war with him. And as I said, I've still got Lizzie and there's a buffer. They, they, they'd be my unofficial best ally. Without even realising it. It's going through to the Chaos Warriors now. Ooh, lovely. Oh, shit. Ha! Ah. Cast warrior though, can we? No, that's weird. Then again, it's not gifted us yet because it's only gifted us one spawn. So you get one spawn and one cast warrior. I guess we've got to wait until he gets to here or something. Right, okay, I'm going to leave this part here for today though, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, leave a like. If you're around here, please drop a sub, help grow the channel. And I'll catch you on the next video. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I will speak to you soon.